I think at the first very, very basic level is that people are entitled to the pay they were promised for the work they've performed. Their economic interest is that paying workers a couple dollars an hour more is a really big deal to them. And they're afraid, I think, that if a union happens, that they will be forced to bargain for a better wage. A union is simply an association of workers who have decided they have a common goal vis-a-vis -vis their employer and that they want to act together concertedly under the statute in order to obtain goals concerning their terms and conditions of employment. Having attorneys that listen to the workers and respect them and do the best that they can to use the law for justice makes a big difference because it only validates the worker's sense of injustice and builds a sense of hope that's, that things can change. Berry season has begun and some of the workers who picked those berries are still battling with a Skagit County farm in court. Workers went on repeated strikes last year to protest their pay and working conditions. <laughs> This case came to us in a pretty organic way. We had worked with Rosalinda Guillen before. Rosalinda got involved with the union after it formed um, because they heard her on the radio. One of their co-workers, one of the workers, Federico Lopez, was complaining to the supervisor about the low wages, piece rate wages. They can't just go out and work an hour and get paid minimum wage. If they're harvesting, they have to pick enough of whatever it is they're harvesting that is the equivalent of what that minimum wage is. If they don't pick enough for the minimum wage, they get fired. Because the grower says, it's illegal for me to pay anybody less than minimum wage, and if you can't keep up and pick that much, then we can't hire you. But it was Federico who um, spoke up, then they fired him. All the other workers listening knew that was wrong, and so they all walked out with him. And that was the beginning of the strike. They were talking about, well, how are we going to do this? And, you know, I said, well, why don't you elect a committee? That was the beginning of the process of the workers governing themselves and actually negotiating with management about some of those issues. That's when they decided they wanted to talk to a lawyer. When Rosalinda said to us, we really need somebody to help us with this union stuff, I said, well, I know an amazing union lawyer. I think she would probably care, and maybe she'd be willing to help. Andrea described what was going on, and of course I had heard about it. I went up to meet with Familia's leadership committee to find out from them what it was they needed. Washington state law recognizes the ability of workers to self-organize. That precedent was established in a farm worker case uh, quite a few years ago now, so that's well established in the state of Washington. They are doing it themselves, and that's pretty darn amazing to watch. Berry pickers went on strike several times last year at Sakuma Brothers Farms in Skagit County are now suing the company. They say Sakuma has blacklisted many of them from working this summer in retaliation for their walkouts. La Vista Negra, the blacklist. If they step out of line, assert their rights on behalf of themselves or their fellow workers, that they won't be hired in the future. Sakuma's lawyer was asking one of the the vice president of the union, where he was working now. The first thing he said was, why are you asking me these questions? Andrea rose and said, I think the witness is worried about retaliation. That's the kind of concern that's very genuine. The Sakumas could call his current farm employer and seek some sort of blacklisting. Retaliation claims are tough. Any company who's firing people like this has always made a plan for some kind of a, an excuse for doing it. It does take a lot of courage um, for people to give up their livelihood um, to stop these practices. This is why farm workers are fighting for a farm worker contract, for a union contract. The 
summer berry season has begun, and some of the workers who pick those berries are still battling with a Skagit County farm in court. They're challenging <laughs> In a farm worker context, there's housing on the farms for migrant workers because they need those folks to come and stay for several months in order to work. The conditions of the housing were really bad. The cooking facilities were two little gas burners this size and a counter with maybe six inches max around it. The ones that had sinks in them were really small 12 inch square sinks, beaten up old refrigerators. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Bathrooms were communal. There was a building for men and a building for women. So there was no bathrooms no porches outside. It was just the door and then the dirt. One of the first things they called, told me was, if you have contact with the media, call them, get them in here. We want them to see everything. We want them to see how we live. Normally, they're afraid, right? Workers are afraid to talk about what's happened to them and why they're fighting. These, these are huge risks that our clients have been willing to take to enforce really the basic rights in the workplace I think many of us take for granted. Hundreds of migrant workers who pick berries in the Skagit Valley have won big in court. A judge has ruled that Takuma Brothers Farm must allow the children and spouses of workers to live in company-provided housing. Well, I've been a farm worker all my life. My father was a farm worker all his life. All my brothers and sisters, we were all farm workers in Skagit County. So we are, we're from the life. They always say we're a family farm. That's the way they always portray themselves. But they are a millions and millions of dollars agribusiness. The pressure has changed. And Sakuma Brothers Berry Farms has to make a decision. What kind of neighbor are they going to be? The legal battles that we've engaged in are strategic and tactical uh, support for winning something else. The goal isn't winning the lawsuit, although it's very satisfying. The goal is to support those workers and their vision and their courage as they try to obtain a collective bargaining agreement. It's exactly how the law should work. The law should work based on people actually using law to build justice, both the workers who know what they need and then the attorneys who can listen and grasp that and then use the law to try to reach the worker's goal. When workers are willing to stick up for themselves and others to assure that people have basic rights in the workplace, that is what propels me forward and is, I think, so compelling about our work and also such a privilege. I am willing to work however long it takes to do this. My relationships with these workers have just been all the motivation that I needed to keep rolling. The beauty of Familias Unidas por la Justicia and Kathy Bernard and labor law and Columbia Legal Services, and it was almost like this perfect combination of all these personalities. These people are inspiring. I, I can't think of a more inspiring group right now, you know? And they're just, every day they're out there doing it against the odds, so. How could you not enjoy being part of that? Outside the courtroom, Lord Torres, president of that association, Familia Zunidas, was getting hugs and thumbs up from other workers. He speaks here through an interpreter. I think it's a very strong victory because nothing like this has ever happened before. Uh, uh, very, in the past, people would do whatever they want with the workers, but now we're fighting that. Also outside in the hallway, Kathy Barnard is an attorney working pro bono to represent the workers who formed a union. Everybody wanted to come back and continue to work there and continue to struggle for a better living <laughs> Skagit County Superior Court Judge Susan Cook was clearly aware that her decision would spark criticism. People will ask, she said, why should a business be forced to provide housing?